Hello everybody, welcome back to controlling the BT playlist. In this video we will start with a short recap of what we have seen and done so far in terms of system modeling and control design. Then we will spend some time comparing the different mechanical models of the BBT, trying to understand how we can leverage them to design our controller. And eventually we will come up with a complete workflow for our controller design. Let's start. This is the BBT system we have been working with and this is the block diagram we have used to represent it. In a previous video, we have modeled the RC servos with linear transfer functions. And we have modeled the mechanical system with four different approaches. And let's quickly go through them. The first one and the simplest one is a linear model. So the mechanical system is described by transfer functions or equivalently by state space equations. Since transfer functions are algebraic equations, they are easy to handle. And we have practically seen that when we designed our controllers. And also we will see in another video that we can leverage the state space representation to design observers. Of course, it requires low computational effort to be simulated by any solver. On the other hand, it is a simplification of our system. We are not modeling the physics in detail. The second one is a nonlinear model. Hence, the mechanical system is modeled through nonlinear equations of motion, which are more accurate compared to the linear model, but still they are a simplification. For example, we are not modeling at all the contact between the ball and the table. Like the linear model, this nonlinear one requires low computational effort, but since it has nonlinearities, we cannot use it to analytically design PID controllers or observers. The third one is the 3D multibody model. In this case, we have an accurate and high fidelity model that we can also use in Activate through co simulation. But in this case, high computational effort is required. It follows that the simulation takes way longer compared to the linear or nonlinear model we have just seen. Finally, we have the real BBT. In this case, we cannot talk about modeling because what we are doing is just to connect Activate with the real plant. In this case, the controller which resides in Activate sends and receives information from the Arduino in real time. Talking about controller, in previous videos we have designed different controllers, from the simple P-controller, which turned out to cause instability, to the PID controller with anti-wind up, characterized by good performances and disturbance rejection. So far, our control design workflow has been a two-step process. The first step is of course the controller design, leveraging the linear model of the mechanical system. The second step is testing on the real hardware. So it seems that in our control design workflow we haven't used the other two mechanical system models. Indeed, this workflow can be improved leveraging also the non-linear model and the multibody one. To understand why and how we should include them, let's use Alter Activate. In particular, what we are about to do is to compare the results we get from different mechanical system models given the same input reference and the same PID controller. Let's open the Activate model. In this model, we can see the PID controller whose gains are defined in the initialization tab. As reference, we are giving a step in the Y direction. Let's have a look at the plant. We can see there are the four different versions the linear one with the transfer functions, the non-linear one with the non-linear equations of motion, the multibody one. Here a co-simulation is performed with the multibody model built in motion view. And here there is the path to the motion view model. It can be a MDL or XML file. Instead, in this file we are storing the result of the simulation. The inputs and the outputs of the system have been defined in motion view 
and they are automatically recognized by Activate. And Activate is giving as input to the motion model the angles and it is receiving back from motion the ball position in X and Y coordinates. Let's quickly open the MDL file which contains the multibody model. Inside Sober Arrays, we can find the inputs and the outputs of the multibody model, the ones which are automatically recognized by Activate. And the last version is the real BBT. Here we see the blocks of the Arduino library, in particular the RC servos, which receive as input the angle, and the touch screen, which is providing the position of the ball in the X and Y coordinates. Activate can communicate with the hardware thanks to the Arduino, and the communication between Activate and the Arduino is handled by this port. And as done in another video, we can seamlessly switch from one version to another thanks to the include diagram block, acting on this variable. This time though, since we have to run the model for each version, so for times, instead of doing it manually, we can do it automatically through a noml script. And this script is defined in the execute OML script block. In this script, we can visualize a for loop at each iteration, the version of the plant which has to be used by the include diagram gets updated and the simulation runs. The simulations are performed accordingly to this order. Lastly, let's see the parameters of the scope where we plot the y position of the ball. We can see that we are using the overlay option which allows us to draw the result of each simulation on the same plot so that we can compare them. Now, we are ready to run all the simulations sequentially. Hence, let's click on Execute. The first one is the simulation using the linear model of the plant. This one instead is using the nonlinear model. Now, it's the turn of cost simulation. Here, communication between Activate and Motion Solve is setting up. After that, the co-simulation will start, and as mentioned before, it will take longer. And finally, we are deploying the controller on the real hardware. Now, let's have a look at this code. So, the first thing to notice is that with all the plant models, we get results close to the real test. But only the multibody model is able to describe the phenomenon of the ball slipping backward before going forward. Also, it is the only one which exhibits small ripples as those ones of the real test. And moreover, it has almost the same overshooting of the real test. We can also visualize the results of the co-simulation on the 3D multibody model. And this can be considered as a virtual validation of the controller. Now, let's consider the linear and nonlinear model. They both run fast, since, as we mentioned before, they require low computation effort. The nonlinear model seems to better approximate the 3D multibody model. It does exhibit some undershooting, but then it catches up with the 3D model. Instead, the linear model is overshooting too much, and it shows some undershooting in this area as well. At this point, we should have gathered all the information we need to include the nonlinear model and the 3D multibody model into our controller design workflow. The linear model and the real BBT, which before were the only two steps of our workflow, will become the start and the end point. So our first step is preliminary control design. This preliminary design is carried over with the linear model, leveraging the analytical method we have used in the previous videos. With this design, we get the initial values of the controller gains. 
Now we are ready to move to the second step, which is an optimization. The goal of this step is to optimize the gains of the controller so that performances are improved. To do that, we need a plant model which is more accurate but still runs fast. So the perfect candidate for this step is the nonlinear model. And as initial values of the optimization, we can use the ones we have obtained in the preliminary design. Once we have the optimal controller, instead of deploying it directly on the real plant, we can leverage the 3D multibody model, which is the most accurate representation of the real plant. We know the eco simulation requires longer time to run, but we only have to run it once, just to virtually validate our controller. If the virtual validation runs successfully, we should expect similar performances in the real case. And we can verify that moving to the fourth step, which is testing the controller on the real hardware. So, including the nonlinear model and the 3D multibody model, we have achieved a more robust controller design workflow, which should reduce the number of back and forth iteration between design and testing since what we are deploying and testing on the real hardware is not a preliminary controller but is an optimal and virtually validated one that's it for this video in the next one we are going to implement the second step of our control design workflow so we are going to optimize the controller gains if you would like to deepen your knowledge regarding system dynamics and controls please visit the first link moreover Feel free to share any question you might have about Compose and Activate in the Model-Based Development Forum. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.